let's get right into it. So Jenny and Summit. Guys, I smell a scam. I smell a scam and the way I'm looking at this scam, I do not like it. Because Summit, or Summit, what does Jenny call him? Summit. <laughs> Summit, he comes over to say goodbye to Jenny because Jenny is packing up because she can't stay in India. Like her and uh, Summit are not getting married. So she got to, you know, get up and go and sleep on her daughter's couch at her big age because she done sold everything to be with this scammer. So anyway, Summit comes over to meet with her. Summit, Summit, well, I'm going to call him different names. Scammer. So Scammer comes over to say goodbye to her. And here is my first red flag yet again. Yet again, this is not sitting right with me because you mean to tell me the family that kidnapped you, almost beat up Jenny, broke the temple, allowed you to come and tell your side chick goodbye? It doesn't make sense to me, especially by how Jenny described this, you know, family assault. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, they, they let you see her twice now. You went over, spent some time with her. Now your cousin has brought you back over here again to say goodbye to her. They are very lenient for a family that kidnapped. Then married Summit starts kissing on Jenny and Jenny acting like the side chick that she is accepts his kisses. You, you, like Jenny, I could have been with you, right? I could have been with you with this whole story about you not knowing that Summit is married. But the way that you are acting, this man has now told you that he is married. Why is your reaction like this? They're hugging and kissing, and then he starts crying. She's just like, oh, baby, I'm not mad at you. I still want to make this work. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's married. He's married. Had that been me, he could not have come back to me twice. I would have not been in India for him to be able to come back again. I would have left that night after I beat him up. So I just don't understand how he keeps on coming over to see her off, spend time with her, and she's hugging and kissing. What are we? What are we going to do? He's married. There's nothing that you guys are going to do. You guys are nothing. Summit is married. Sis, what is happening here? Let me tell you what I think is happening here. Jenny and Summit been messing around, right? Summit's family, after Jenny came out to visit him, Summit's family was just like, listen, um, we probably could have been okay with him bringing home a white woman, but you're not going to bring home no white woman that can't bear us no children, no fruit, no grandkids, no child to take on the family legacy and you continue know, the family bloodline. So that is where I think their issue is with her. So right after she came and stayed with them, the family was just like, okay, put her on the plane. When you come back, we got a little wife for you. Summit marries this woman still messing with Jenny. Jenny knew that he was married. He absolutely told her. That is what I believe. I feel like they both came on this show to shame and humiliate Samit's wife so that she can divorce him, so that he can go and be free to live with Jenny in the United States of America. That is exactly what I think happened. That's why Jenny came out here, so this woman could be mortified. Because she could probably deal with it when the side chick was in the United States of America and she was nowhere near her husband. Now the side chick is a city away. He got a whole film crew filming with her, crying on TV, talking about how much he loved her. Samit know that everybody in that town gonna see that show and everybody gonna be talking about this woman, making fun of this woman because she's married to a man that does not love her. Not only does he not love her, he's in love with a white woman that's 90 damn years old. So she gonna be getting dragged in the town. They wanted to humiliate her so that she could be at her wit's end and decide to divorce Samit because Samit keeps on talking about the fact that she is not giving him the divorce. He wants it, she won't give it. She won't let go of this man. My problem with Summit or Samit is that you were married and still trying to be with this woman. Jenny is absolutely responsible for her part. You are married to this woman, not Jenny. That is your wife. Whether you agree to it or wanted it or not, I'm not even sure about that. I kind of feel like, I don't know Samit's culture, right? But I'm just feeling like the way he's describing them is not adding up to what we are seeing on TV. I'm like, they're kidnapping you, but they're giving you all this time to spend with the, chi the side chick. It's like a family that almost jumped Jenny and is breaking temples and dragging you out of the home would not allow you to come see her. 
it just doesn't make sense to me. And I feel like he's embellishing just like I feel like how Tiffany and Ronald embellishes on South Africa to American viewers because we don't, a lot of us have not visited there. So they're saying, oh, it's dangerous. Oh, it's so scary. Those of us who have not been there, who do not know people from there would believe it. Thankfully for me, I, I haven't been there, but I have a really good friend who lives there and I just know the truth of South Africa. Yes, there are dangerous places everywhere in the world, but a place that has mass shootings every other five minutes should not be looking at another nation going, oh my goodness, this is so dangerous. Tiffany is playing games, okay? So that's what I feel like is going on with Sami. I feel like he's embellishing on American ignorance and hoping that we will go along with this story to get on him and Jenny's side so that we will not see that Sami is cheating on his wife. Sami and his side chick came on this show to manipulate the viewers to be on his side and to humiliate his wife and force her to give him a divorce. I can't be on Jenny's side and I cannot be on Samit's side because I don't think that's fair. I'm thinking of a woman. Okay, so she's not giving you a divorce. You gotta find another way, bro. Go to jail. If you want Jenny that bad and if in India, you, you gotta do a couple years in prison. If you wanna get a divorce, do that. Why are you trying to humiliate this girl? on national TV, you know what I mean? Cause we don't know what she looked like, but that town know exactly who she is. And she has to walk out in that world knowing that everybody knows that her husband don't want her. And he told the world on TV, come on, that's not right. I cannot side with this couple. They can do all the crying that they want. That man is married. Regardless of how it happened, it ain't none of my business and it ain't yours either, Jenny. The minute you found out that man was married, you should have walked away. When you decided to continue to be with him and then come on this show to try to make this whole spectacle so he could shame the woman that he's with, you lost me, girl. You lost me. You always supposed to ride for your sisters. How dare you go along with this scam to humiliate another woman? No, I don't, I'm not team Jenny. I'm not team Samit. I'm team Mrs. Samit. That's who I'm writing for in this one. Because, because Jenny and Summit, this scam is falling apart. This scam is falling apart. You should have did a couple Meisner acting classes before you came on this show because your reactions to the stuff that you are finding out is not sitting right with me. It's not making sense. What you are saying is not making sense to what we are seeing on TV. And this show, 90 Day Fian any 90 Day Fiance is messy as hell. They would have showed us everything. All the stuff that you're saying about the wife, all the stuff that you're saying about the family, we don't see none of it because the family didn't want to participate. Okay, there's ways. They get people who don't want to be on camera all the damn time and they block out their eyes. That's what they do. Y'all scamming, y'all scamming. And I think I know why, and I don't like it. Corey and Evelyn, listen, um, like I said, I feel really bad for what has happened to Corey, and um, I wish him well. I, him and his family, I wish them well. That being said, um, you can't force a woman to marry you. Like, it just, I feel like Evelyn, from what I've seen as a viewer, I feel like she's been very upfront about what she wants. She always says, no marriage, no kids. E -e -e -e. She don't want it. But Corey wants these things and he's with this woman. And I think that he feels like he can love her to wanting what he wants. That will never work, especially when a woman, when a woman tells you that she does not want to be married and she does not want to have kids, listen to her. She means that. And I'm not saying men don't mean it. I'm just saying women get shamed in every society for not wanting to have children and not wanting to have kids. For a woman to be upfront and honest with that, knowing what will come with her choice. Oh, she telling the truth. Oh, I believe Evelyn 1000% Corey, who has been with her for years, so not anymore, cause he, you know, <laughs> blowing out Larissa's back. This cast is so messy. So anyway, Corey goes to meet with Evelyn's father to take her up uh, to ask for her hand in marriage. And the dad is like, sure, that's cool with me. 
But it's not going to be cool with my daughter. He knows his child. He's like, she doesn't want to get married. She doesn't want to have kids. So I don't know how you're going to work it. But, you know, if she were to get married with anybody, I would want for it to be with you. So you can have it. But I don't know if she's going to take it. So Corey takes this and he's very excited. He got, you know, her father's approval. Didn't listen to the dad at all. All he heard was the dad saying yes, right? So then he, you know, takes Evelyn on this surprise, you know, hot air balloon trip and... He has this, this sign set up, but they're too far in the hot air balloon for her to see it. So when they get down, he asks the men who set up the hot air balloon to set up the, um, to set up the letters and to set up the letters somewhere where he can take Evelyn to see it. So he takes Evelyn to see it and she's like, Evelyn looks like she was hit by a car. <laughs> she was like, ooh, okay, baby. Like, she don't want it, Corey. She don't want it. So Corey gets down on one knee and she turns around and she's like, oh, are you serious? This is what you want? Oh, really, baby? Like, yes or no? Yes or no? She is struggling, right? And I think if Corey's father had not just passed, Evelyn would have said no. I felt like I watched a woman be forced into an engagement because of the situation. You know what I mean? Not only is she on camera, this man who has just lost his father, who when the cameras aren't rolling, she's laying in bed with him and she's hearing him crying and holding him together. She don't want to break his heart anymore. So she's just like, oh, okay. Yes, yeah, sure, whatever you want. And Corey is sitting there, he's like, oh, you know, this is what I want, Evelyn. You know, this is what I want more than anything. And I'm like, this ain't right. This ain't right. Yes, Evelyn is, you know, she is uh, rough. She a rough chick, you know what I mean? Like she is not soft and emotional like women are supposed to be or how, you know, society wants women to be. So, you know, you can read her a different way, right? But she don't deserve that. She don't. Like Corey, Corey knew. That's why he said, you know, this is what I want. What about what she wants? Corey, you got to, I, well, you probably are with somebody who wants the same thing right now, but in this moment, he wasn't listening to her. And it just seems like if you've been with her this long and you know that she does not want to get married or have kids, why are you proposing? Have you never listened to her? Or you just think in your mind that you can change her? Corey right now is acting like a woman. That's what we do. We feel like we can change a man. We can just love him to be in what we want and fix and work on him. You can do all that. You'll fix and work on him and he'll be good for somebody else, not for you. Like when a person shows you who they are, believe them, take them at their word and either deal with it or get out. We literally watch a woman be forced into an engagement. She didn't want it. We all saw her, you know, we, we all saw her face. We all heard her apprehension, but I felt like she knew that she just could not hurt this man again. She knew it. She was just like, uh, you know, I've been cheating. He's, you know, confronting dudes that I slept with. His father has passed away. He moved out here to be with me. Ah, yes. It's no, 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 I'm not for this at all. Ji Hoon and anime Avril Lavigne. So this is the wedding day for uh, Ji Hoon and Devin. And I will say, when it first started out, Devin kind of got on my nerves because she, I just felt like she was acting like a very bratty American. She's just like, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's being said. Well, girl, that's your fault. You wanted to move to Korea. This was your idea to move to Korea. Why didn't you learn the language? While you were getting your back blown out by Ji Hoon, you should have been studying the language, studying the culture, studying the food. Like, <laughs> if you planned on moving there, why wouldn't you prepare for these things? So she's having her wedding ceremony. And she's like, oh, my arms hurt. Oh, what is happening? I don't understand. Devin, you, how old is Devin? I feel like she whines and complains so much. She's such, she's just very, Debbie Downerish. It's just like, oh, what's going on? Don't say that. Don't wake him up. Oh, my arms are hurting. I'm in Korea. Girl, this was your decision. This is what you wanted to do. It's your wedding day. You can see everybody is very happy. His family is trying. 
they're making efforts and she's just being a sourpuss. Thankfully, she finally came around. But I'm like, girl, don't start the ceremony off like that. I thought it was a really beautiful ceremony. I really love culture. I really, really do. But you know what I love? And I, um, and I went down a YouTube rabbit hole like a year ago because one of, when I started using YouTube, before I started doing videos, I would come to YouTube to find out how to like do my makeup because when I started working in film and TV, I would have issues with the makeup department because they never knew how to do my makeup. So I had to learn how to do my makeup to be on camera, right? So I didn't know what I was doing. So I would go to YouTube and get help because my best friend is a, is a celebrity makeup artist, but he does like bomb glam photo shoot editorial looks. I'm just like, I need to look like a prisoner. You know what I mean? Like I just need to look like myself, but I need to like match myself up. So I would go to YouTube and get help for certain things. And I remember one of the uh, beauty bloggers, uh, beauty vloggers that I follow, cause I specifically follow uh, uh, beauty bloggers with my skin tone. Because yes, all people can do great makeup. But before I purchase something, I want to know what this foundation look like on somebody who's chocolate with oily skin, period, right? So uh, one of the beauty bloggers that I follow got married and she got uh, her husband, her husband was white, but I think it was like, not white American. He was white, was he Scottish or something? It was something, but it was like a merging of cultures. So I was like watching this Nigerian and Scottish wedding. YouTube started recommending all of these, you know, uh, multicultural weddings. And then I was watching uh, um, African American woman marry an uh, Indian man. And then I watched another African American marry a Vietnamese man. Then I got all the way to China. And this, this black sister from Australia was marrying like this Chinese, like, I don't know if he was a royal. He had like a huge title and like the whole town, like the wedding was the entire, it was so beautiful. I remember watching this wedding just crying because it was just like a, a blending of cultures. It was so beautiful and just, you know, I'm such a unity kind of person. Like I love that. I thrive off diversity and I just love that like blending that beautiful blend of cultures. And so that's what Jihoon in Devin's wedding looked like to me. I just loved it. I love that that just blend of culture to like really? see, just to see their cultures come together and blend and just to see her in her, you know, her wedding dress and to see her go through all of, you know, the steps of the wedding ceremony, like eating the seed or something like that. Like Jihoon was making you know, he was making it really light for her because he knew that she didn't know a lot of what was going on. The foods that were being eaten and the elders that were helping them through the ceremony. It was just beautiful. It really, really was beautiful. So that's why I was kind of upset that Devin didn't have a much better attitude in the beginning because I was all into it. I loved it. I was ready to cry. I kind of, you, you know, shed a little tear at the end because she looked so beautiful next to him in their confessional and they were both in, you know, their, their wedding attire. And I, beautiful. Beautiful. Congrats, Devin and Jihoon. Congrats. And little Targaryen. Little Targaryen was there. Drusilla wasn't there, though. You know what? It's probably for the best. She would have tore that place up. <sighs> Tiffany and Ronald. <sighs> I didn't, I did not want to talk about them, but they had a really, you know, important wrap up. So I felt like I needed to. Anyway, so Tiffany and Ronald are meeting with his counselor because Tiffany is concerned that her leaving, Ronald's family leaving would trigger him into, would trigger his addiction, you know, his issues that he has. And I'm sitting up here watching my TV and I'm like, oh girl, you think, you think his wife, his unborn child and his son that he has adopted as his own is leaving him. You don't think that's going to trigger that man? Like, girl, are you serious? Are you, guys. Like, this is the thing, outside of the fact that I feel like they're embellishing on, you know, the dangerousness of South Africa, Tiffany, I don't understand you. I don't understand you. And I feel like you are making these decisions with people's lives and hearts. That isn't fair. It's not right. You come to South Africa, marry this man, 
get pregnant, start playing house with him. And then three months later, you're just like, well, I'm gonna go back to America because I can't do this place. Girl, what? Why didn't you just go there to live to see if this was something that you could do before bringing your son and having him get attached to this man, before having unprotected sex with this man and getting pregnant, before marrying him, standing before God and his family and saying your family and saying that this is the person that you want to be with for the rest of your life. Why would I just, it just seems so irresponsible, so irresponsible. Responsible. Like, I just put, really felt bad for Ronald and for Tiffany's son, Daniel. And, and, and our unborn child, like, let's be real. Ronald ain't never getting in. Ronald is not ever getting into the United States of America. At least right now. I don't know who's going to be the next president because it seemed like, girl, pray for America, y'all. We are going through it. But I just... I don't know. Maybe, may, listen, maybe if it's Elizabeth Warren, she'll let him in because she, you know... We will finally have a president with a heart. Like, maybe, but I don't know. I don't know. Ronald is a felon in his own country. We got enough felons over here. We're not letting no new ones in. So I just don't know. I told you guys about my friend trying to keep her um Italian father in the country, but you know, they're trying to get rid of him. They're trying to kick him out of the country. He has contributed to this nation in such a beautiful and financially successful way. They still don't like, these laws are so strict. It's like, it's a fight to keep him here. So Ronald, if America is trying to kick out good immigrants, I don't think they letting in you, brother. I don't think it's happening. So that's my, that's why I have an issue with Tiffany because she's just like, I'm just gonna move back and we're gonna work on getting your visa so you can come to the United States and we can get married and you can become a citizen. It's such a long shot though, girl. It's such a long shot. And dare I say, damn near impossible. And you, that's why I get pregnant though. Why I get pregnant? Why introduce your son to him? That's my issue. Is that there are people here that are going to be greatly affected. Yes, Tiffany will be greatly affected, but you're taking two children away from their father because Daniel's father has passed away and he didn't want anything to do with him in the first place. The only father that Daniel has essentially ever known He's being taken away from him. And then your daughter, I think she had a daughter, right? Your daughter don't know her daddy. I, I don't know, guys. I, I just, Tiffany, 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 Tiffany. Listen, I wish you made decisions as well as you are able to do a winged eye line. Tell you something, she could do a winged eye. Like, she got that down pat, right? I wish you made decisions that good. You know what I also think? I think that Tiffany never planned on staying in South Africa. I think when she got on this show, she scammed. I think Tiffany is scamming. I think this whole thing was a scam. I think she went to South Africa to get married to Ronald and also to get pregnant by him and also to have her son develop a relationship with him. So that when it comes to pleading her case, she has all of this information to provide to the immigration court to say, listen, I know that he is this, but he is rehabilitated. He is a good citizen. He is my husband. We have two children. He took on my son when my son's own blood father didn't want him. Like all of this stuff that she can say to the immigration courts to, you know, maybe be lenient on Ronald and see that this is a good guy because he has a wife here with children. Like, I think that's what she was doing because I just don't think that she ever intended on staying there. She got out too quick for me. She got out too quick for me. Samit had Jenny in an apartment with two spices and no car. She stayed for damn near six months. Tiffany didn't even try to make it three months, 90 days, 90 days and you're ready to go. She didn't even try to make it work because I don't think that she ever planned on staying there. I do not, I think this is a scam. I'm finding out all these scams on this show, all these scams because guys, what did I tell you? When it doesn't make sense, it's a scam. Then we get the scene that just broke my heart, broke my heart. Tiffany, Ronald and Daniel are at the airport. We see Daniel increasingly get more and more distraught the nearest that they get to security. Like he's in the airport and like when they're walking up, he's already like, oh, you're, we're leaving? Oh, we're going to America? But you're staying? Okay. And then as they get closer and closer, he just starts breaking down. Tiffany, this ain't right, girl. This ain't 
right. Then Ronald is breaking down. And this, this is what got me. Y'all know I can't stand this couple. When they were almost through security, Ronald said, I got to get one more hugged. Turned around, ran back, ran under the poles and hugged them both and broke down crying. I can't stand them guys, but they had me tearing up. I was like, oh, oh my God. Like <laughs> travailing, okay. Me and Daniel was falling out because I just felt so bad for this couple. Really, really did. Although I think it's a scam, I felt bad. <laughs> I really, really did. So we will see. Like next week, I think it's a tell-all, right? Which one of these is the tell-all? Is this? This is the other way, right? I think, yeah, I think next week is a tell-all. So we'll see. We'll see what's going on with this couple. But uh this this got my heart this got my heart what did you guys think of this episode let's talk about it in the comment section below and if you like what you see here please like comment subscribe and share and i will see you monday not monday because i might have to work on monday probably tuesday afternoon for the following episode of 90 day fiance the other way around love you guys bye